Great Bar School in Birmingham is the largest secondary school in England with two and a half thousand pupils and a staff of 160 teachers. Joining the staff this term are 18 NQTs and we'll be focusing on two of them. First we'll see how Gail Clark deals with a challenging Year 8 class. This is taking way too long Year 8. If I have to do this in your break time, I will. And we'll discover how Edward Aguirre's American accent impacts on his pupils in ICT. If you do not get the level of work done that I need, or if you're badly behaved, then I will keep you some time after school. Ryan. Assisting these new teachers with their classroom management is behavioural expert Sue Cowley. That gets the attention, okay. right? Then when they all kind of look around, you then everybody looking this way. Silence now. Sue will be reviewing how they're getting on in their lessons and providing help with classroom control. Great Bar puts a high priority on supporting its newly qualified teaching team. The responsibility for their care and development falls to induction mentor Elaine Caldicott. I'm very keen um, to ensure that every NQT across the school has a common entitlement within their departments and that they do get um, a standardised lesson observation from me and from their induction tutors in the department. When I qualified from university I never thought I really wanted to be a teacher. I'd always done thought about and work with kids because I really enjoy that. So I thought well I'm make it a career, I enjoy it, they enjoy it. It sounds like it's the best recipe for success. I've got one class that I particularly struggle with like all the time and I've had them today. They're a funny class because it's not the kind of class where it's out of control, if you know what I mean, but I've got to stay on top of them because I know it'll get to a point where they're out of control. Especially at a young age, I believe that everybody does want to know and I think everybody has it as a, you know, an, an innate desire to, to know, to, for knowledge. I sort of deal with them, they're, they're getting better to be honest, which is, I think, sort of a reflection of just, you know, trying different techniques and building relationships and uh, trying to change the kind of work so it's, it's more suited to them. Investment in the social needs of the new teaching team at Great Bar is highly valued and comes from the top. A social event for us is part of the emphasis upon their professionalism that we are showing, demonstrating in a kind of practical way that we value them as, as individuals, as human beings. They have a full um, programme of support. Every other week we meet um, after school and that's a formal meeting um, where we discuss all sorts of issues. Sometimes it's an open forum for them to sort of bring out into the open whatever it is they're concerned and worried about. Other times it's a little bit more structured um, and we'll do things like a tour of the catchment area. We will um, get various specialist speakers in to, to do some insets with them. Each department should have citizenship based lessons. Anything they need um, I can adapt the programme to suit their needs. Having the well-organised support of the school and so many NQT colleagues to rely on is clearly a huge bonus for the new team at Great Bar. To learn a bit more about what can happen at the sharp end, we've taken the cameras into the classroom to look at how Gail Clark is teaching Year 8 art. OK, Year 8, before we start, can you make sure that your uniforms are correct, please? Top buttons and shirts tucked in. OK, silently sit down, please. On your table, you will see there is a sheet that looks like this. OK? You will need to take a sheet, put your name and form at the top, and then complete the questions, please. Listen for your names as well. Could you just empty your mouth for me, please? The art department has um, some staff that have been there for a long time, and it was important that a new face that was coming in was going to fit. Uh, and Gail certainly does. She's very lively, um, really keen to get it right, is constantly asking questions, um, and is, is keen to be re a really successful classroom teacher. Sensibly and quietly, could we go and stand around that table there, please? Have I asked for you to all have a big conversation about it? OK, in today's lesson, you're going to be creating OK? An information page. You're working on the images today and ripping these bits of papers up 
So all I've done is just cut the, stick them down and then cut them out again, OK? Right, go back to your tables quietly, please. <laughs> Paint brushes. Paint brushes are all on the side in front of the watercolour paint. Could you go and grab some uh, watercolour paints for your table, please? For the last time, empty your mouth, young man. You should lock it. Empty your mouth. You should be eating sweets. You know the rules. Empty your mouth. Right, guys, we should be sat down now. It's starting to work. You should be now painting your double pages. Sit down and put your hand up. Right, you right. Can we have silence, please? Silence. All eyes this way. Just get this straight. There is some people who have followed the instructions and sat down and are painting their pages. Excellent. The rest of you should not be out of your seats. You should be painting your pages by now. <laughs> Hands up, please. I can't do with all the noise at the same time. What, what else do you know to think about? Guys, one of you get some paper towels. See? Nothing to panic about. Just stop, guys. Brushes down. Clinton. I know you're very eager to get it finished, but I've asked you to put it down, please. Thank you. Shut up, Jordan, man. Gosh. Okay, guys, can you put everything down, please? Sit down, please. Look at me. Absolutely everything down. And quiet eyes this, this way. Eyes looking at me. I'm stood over here, guys. I've asked you to stop, put everything down. Still haven't got eyes this way. Eyes need to be this way. Sit down, guys. No one's going anywhere until I dismiss you quietly. I ain't got mad. This time, could you put your chairs in here, please, and go? Who's are these? It's time to go forensic. Sue Cowley has looked at the tapes of Gail's lesson and is now going to explore the detail of what went on and the areas where Gail might improve. So Gail, I've watched your lesson and I've got a few things that I'm going to be able to talk to you about, but can you tell me what you want to get out of our work together? Um, well, it's just all about behaviour management really, just the, the control of, of that class and, and other classes, little ideas that I might be able to use with the other classes, in particular this class, because when the cameras were there, they were, they were angels almost, you yeah, know, in their own little yeah. way. Um, and then I had them the week after, it was a Friday, and I actually ended up in tears after that lesson because of how frustrated they made me feel. But the main thing was that I'd seen them yes. in, in this way, in this lesson. And that tells you that their misbehaviour yeah. is a choice. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to show them how to make the right choices yeah. and give them reasons to make the right choices. Yeah. And hopefully I'll be able to show you how to do that. Hopefully. <laughs> OK, you're right. Before we start, can you make sure that you... What is your expectation correct, about, about their uniform? Um, so the top button's done correctly. Right. The ties are pushed up to the collars and also the shirts. You have put yourself in a good position. It's yeah. a good thing to do. You've said, I'm going to back up the school policy on this. Mm -hmm. But if you don't follow it through, what do they think? Get away with much more. Right. And it's those little things mm -hmm. that communicate a message, particularly with year seven and eight. Okay. okay. As you go higher up the school, you might choose to relax on certain expectations. But it's those things that send a message. Okay. You will need. Right, they are still settling down. He's rejigging his tie, OK, right. as you've asked him to, and you're already telling them what they need. What's going to happen if you do that? He's going to be behind and then rushing around and causing... OK, yeah, and they, they're not listening. The fuss. Children don't mm. listen. They can't be doing something with their hands yep. or getting pulling a chair out and listening at the same time. OK. So what you need to do at this point... Is stop, stop, stop. Don't say anything yet. This kid's still fiddling. You're telling them to take a sheet and put their name on this kid. It's not gone in his brain because he's like, I'm doing my time, miss. I'm doing my tie. Don't tell me about my name, my name, my name. What's my name? 
Now, at this point, if you do want to be doing anything, you should be walking around the room going, OK, good tie, nice. Right, up okay. tight, yeah. Get them all settled first before yeah. you think about doing anything to do with the lesson. Joseph. Yes, Daniel. With a tricky class, mm -hmm. I would be tempted to insist on stillness and silence okay. during the register. So that at the end of the register, you have this moment where the lesson begins. Right. And it's at that point that I would set the objectives. Yeah. So your starter activity kind of mucks up the beginning of the lesson for right. you because can you see how some of them are still fiddling around and not actually getting yeah. on with it so I'd be tempted to think about that what is the name of the group of artists that you asked to research about for homework the something something brotherhood how did the starter activity relate to what was going to go on in the lesson later on? it was actually referred back to the <coughs> lesson previous right so it's questions testing their knowledge right uh, something that i could actually mark afterwards and just, right. just test their to knowledge test on it yeah. yeah okay now i had the feeling that your starter activity put you off the whole okay. thing of setting your objectives it Maybe. kind of almost got in the way okay and although you know you're advised to use a star trek activity main mm -hmm. section plenary yeah with some classes that won't be appropriate or the star trek activity might be a very short sort of verbal yeah q a okay. session something like yeah. that how many of their names would you honestly say you know be honest because it's there's no shame in it You're ten teaching. and max okay yeah now as i watch this tape I only heard two names. I'm not going to say what those names mm -hmm. are, but those two students whose names you said, what kind of students do you think they are? <laughs> the students who do what in your lessons? Um, mess me about right. a bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the classic thing and it's the instinct, yeah. and it, absolutely natural instinct, yeah. is to remember the names of the kids mm. who are being naughty. Okay? Now, you know the theory. And what's the theory? What should you be doing? Well, trying to introduce myself to the uh, the ones I don't know, okay, so that I can use yeah. them as my... And using the names of the ones that are behaving themselves, yeah? yeah? Now, they're coming around the table here, and they do this quite nicely. Mm -hmm. And about 90% of them do it really well, and they've got their uniform beautifully. Yeah. OK, so at this point, what I might do is go, OK, now I need to learn a few names before we start. So you're looking really smart. You've behaved really well. Yeah. What's your name? OK. I'm going to give you a merit mark. You should be now painting your double pages. Sit down and put your hand up. What reward system have you got in place with this class? It is merits. Okay. It's the whole school. Right. Yeah. How many merits did you give out in this lesson? Probably none at all. Okay. Now it's hard That's to terrible. remember. <laughs> no, it's not terrible because it's hard to remember everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. But rewards are one of the best ways yeah. of getting these children to behave as you wish and try not to get hooked into this thing where you focus on a couple of faces here who are the tricky kids yeah look around every class that you teach and go okay she's quiet she's nice she yeah. always does her work she was hands her homework in. you're brilliant i've got three merits to give out today and you've been brilliant so far you're going to get one okay. of them and try and have that as one of the things that mm. you're going to start your lesson with you can get some more, okay. now what was the one thing that you wanted them to get out of that? I was showing them how to present homework to a good standard. Right. So that, like, in future homeworks... And what was the wash right. for? Was it to make it look aged? Look aged or look just better than a plain white piece of paper. Right. OK, like and it. then they were, were they cutting some letters out? Is that They're right? cutting, let, cutting lettering out, cutting um, images out of the, the artist's work and then also do some written sure. work to go sure. with it as well. Right, OK. Mm -hmm. Some of these children took about 20 minutes to do the colour wash. Yeah. OK. So what you might want to do is set them some time as time well. Limits. Give them some yeah. targets to work for, OK? So let's imagine the class are out there and they're in front of me. Now, I'll give you a tip. Whenever you set any task, start off by saying, when I say go. Yeah. Because if you don't, what happens? Just do it anyway. They just yeah. off. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. not focusing. Off on one. So, you're looking at the class. When I say go, I want you to start. And you're going to do four things. How many things, Fred? Uh, three, three, miss. No. How many things, Jemima? Four things, miss. Four. Well yeah. done, Jemima. It gives you the opportunity. Lots of praise. OK. So, repetition. So, when I say go, there's going to be four things I want you to do. Lots of visual backup with yeah. your hands, numbers with your hands, OK? Yeah. So, you tell me. What's the first thing? Succinct, concise, tell me. Colour wash using the watercolour paints. First, so get the number in. Yeah. First, you've got two minutes 
to colour wash your paper okay. using the watered down paint. Do you see how then they're, they understand it's they've got two minutes? It's almost theatrical as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. absolutely. If they yeah. hear lots of words, mm -hmm. they won't get it. If they hear, first, you have two minutes to colour wash the page. Yeah. So very simple, very succinct. Okay. okay. Right, guys, we should be sat down now. It's starting to work. That was my pen. Now, how do you get this class silent? What strategy do you use? Um, do you well, call the, out silent? I usually please? either call out silent. This is with all my classes to get their attention. Or I do the, the three, two, one, and then I just wait. But I don't know why I didn't do it there. Do you sometimes feel like you have to wait forever? Yeah. yeah, and then it's okay. as if you're wasting most of your lesson. Absolutely, but they're wasting the lesson, not you. Yeah. Yeah, because you're, you are entitled to ask for silence when you want to communicate with the class, OK? Right, you right, can we have silence, please? Silence! All eyes this way. Now, I generally advise against using a verbal command to get silence from a whole class, OK? okay? Because what happens is you shout over them, they're making noise so they don't hear you, yeah. so you get frustrated, then you have to shout again, and it indicates to them that you're not in control. Right. OK? So try something like... That gets the attention, okay. right? Then when they all kind of look around, you then, everybody, looking this way. Silence now. So really quick. Mm -hmm. Or another way to do it is to look around and go, Right, you're silent, brilliant, you can go to break on time. So start pointing out the children who are doing what you want. Yeah. Write something on the board, write in huge lettering. Quite Silence. Mm. But actually, you shouldn't have needed to get them silent. No. Because if you'd set the instructions... At the start. At the start. Yeah. Do you see how those instructions mm. will help you to manage the class? Who has completed the answers to those questions? You have a tendency, and a lot of NQTs, and I think I believe I did as well, you're very easily distracted from the main purpose. What's the main purpose of what's happening in your classroom at this point? Them working. Them and getting on, on with the work. And, yeah. Yeah. You almost need to be kind of buzzing around all over the place. Yeah. And your movement around the room is good, yeah, mm -hmm. when you don't get yourself too focused on one, one little thing. spot. So what colours are you going to take, Now, Daniel? can I ask you to just watch this bit? This one here, just that OK, one. now I'm a year eight boy. What things am I interested in in life? Over the back of it. Could you go and grab some uh, watercolour paints What things table, are important to me in my life? What kind of things do I enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> OK. What do I enjoy? I enjoy football. Yeah. What else am I into? Ladies, yes. women. Yes, <laughs> yes. I would say that this is a better option yeah. in terms of outfits and it's the sort of thing you often don't realize you've done mm. it and I mean actually seeing yourself on camera kind of highlights it to you yeah. it's the same thing with short skirts it's all the things that I didn't realize it was that low yeah. to be honest. <laughs> okay you've seen it I won't harbor <laughs> on the point okay is this helping you Gail? It, it is yeah I mean there's a lot of points out of this that I will take take out and use them actually in my lessons uh, in all lessons across the board that is The regular contact with NQTs enables the management team to identify where support may be needed and also to spot when progress is outstanding. Edward is a fascinating character. Um, he stood out amongst the NQTs from day one. Um, I think it's his formality sometimes that was quite striking. The first time I had the class, they were terrible. You know, they weren't used to me. I wasn't used to them and I had to drill in my instructions and kind of drilling my expectation for their behaviour. It's got a bit of a larger than life personality and certainly his accent, his American accent, was fascinating for everybody. So initially um, there was a, a direct interest in Edward. Yes, yeah, so to log on, log to the internet, then turn your monitors off, then face the front. Well done, George. Just face this way, please. The children are certainly interested in him because of his interest in dance and, again, the American sort of influence um, within him. Good afternoon, class. What I'll do now, I'll take the register. When I call your name, just say, yes, sir. If I do mispronounce your name, I apologise and please correct me, OK? He seems to be somebody who really wants, he's desperate to get it just right. Um, 
And I think so far he is doing just that. He's following the systems, he's following the rules. Brett, Back in the induction fortnight in July, he was the one that was asking loads and loads of Matthew, questions, very keen to get to grips Joseph, with the systems in the school, to Marcus, find out the procedures for various George. things. And judging by the start he's made, his department are absolutely thrilled to bits with him. He's getting a handle on it all and he's doing well. Right, could you tuck your shirt in please? Close the door. Right, don't do anything for the minute mark, just have a seat. What we're gonna do today is, in year eight, were you familiar with learning how to use flow charts in year eight? Well, what we're gonna do in year nine, we're gonna build on that, and I'm, we're gonna try to control a system for a water park ride. Okay. So by the end of the six weeks, we're gonna work on this. You would have produced a computer-based control system to enhance the safety of a water ride. So, what strategies does Edward Aguirre find most effective in organising and teaching his ICT pupils? Edward, can you tell me a bit about how you came to be at the school and what your background is? Yeah, um, I was born in Texas. Oh, right, right. And I moved here when I was um, a young child. Right. So a lot of my education, a lot of my adolescent education was taken up in England. Now, gentlemen, if you have a flat screen monitor, could you just turn it this way so that I can see it? Yeah, just turn it around. Turn it around. Do you think the accent? Gives you an advantage. It, um, well. It's kind of a gift and a, a curse. Yeah. It was a gift when I started out because yeah. I sound so different. Yeah. You know, a lot of the kids would say, novelty. like, hold on, he's, he's not like us, he sounds yeah. different. I'm, I'm going to listen to what he has to say. Yeah. Obviously, when someone always sounds different, kids always kind of want to tune into that new sound, that unheard sound. But it's a curse because kids still like to, you know, take the mickey and always copy, imitate what I say and stuff. First person that can do that well may get a merit, okay? So that's what I want you to do first. That's your first activity. I want to do it quietly, please. What yes. would you say were your strengths at the moment? Where do you feel you're doing well? With that class in particular, that was the fourth time I taught them. Right. And it took me pretty much three lessons to get them to that level. And what sort of things did you do? Um, the first lesson, because they hadn't met me before, yeah, then I got to know me, um, I had to establish myself. Hey, class, good afternoon. I'm waiting for you to line up quietly. I want for you to all face this way. So when they waited outside, I, I waited for absolute silence. Brilliant. As in, I so stood there behavior. and I just waited for silence. You know, I said once, I'll wait for silence, because they hadn't met me before. So until every single person that line, 22 kids, was silent, I didn't continue. If you do not get the level of work done that I need, or if you're badly behaved, then I will keep you some time after school. And you can explain to me then why you weren't well behaved and why you didn't get your work done. I was looking Class. at them in their eyes, you know, yes. making sure that they could see me then. I then said, right, that took 20 minutes to get, to get you all to be quiet. You haven't met me before. You have no idea who I am. All that you know is that I am a teacher waiting for you all to be quiet. I'm scared. <laughs> but they're, they're still silent. And then, you know, yeah. OK, my name. My name is Mr. Igeri. It says so on my name tag. If you cannot pronounce that, you can call me sir. But I will be your teacher for this year in ICT. If you do not do that silently the first time, we'll come out here and do it again, and we'll practice again, possibly till after school. A lot of my sanctioning has been just leaving my classroom straight away, only because I'm fortunate that a lot of senior members of staff have their offices outside of my classroom. Yeah. Yeah. So with low-level behavior, I give one, two warnings. Anything else that disrupts my learning, I'll say to the pupil, you're not disrupting my learning, you're wasting time for me yeah. or the pupils. Yeah. You can now leave my classroom. All right, yeah, four minutes left on that class. Four minutes. You're so consistent, you're so yeah. clear. Can you see any potential downsides to that? Yes, um, some pupils are still very defiant. I mean, right. I, I am a strict teacher when it comes to education, and yeah. a lot of kids are still very defiant. They still don't understand what I'm trying to do with and them. And what do you do when a kid's defiant? I will go up to the phone and find them and address their behavior to them, usually in private outside. I also refer their behavior to their form tutor, right. the head of the house as Brilliant. well. Not to say, could you please get this kid and address him, but just to let them know, this child who is from your form, from your house, right. is, has this behavior, I will follow it up. So they've got the information. Yeah. Then. Now, I don't want you to spend too much time writing in too much information. Just give me a very brief description of what each one is, okay? Yes. Do you think there's some students in this school who respond to you differently think because you're male? Think about it. Do you think that there's an element of male, female teachers having slightly different I think, Perception I think some students? I think some definitely re respond to me. The lads are still trying to be more yeah. chummy. Yeah. And at the same time, me being a male, I am trying not to be 
so pastoral with things like the girls because obviously the girls won't feel that comfortable really yeah, yeah, being yeah. confiding in a yeah, male teacher, yeah. so. And do you think that'll be an issue when you come to have a form group? I think it may be. be quite a, I think a difficult area it will for be. you. There, I mean, there was, there was a girl crying a couple of weeks ago when I said yeah. to her, you know, I understand. I don't know what's going on, but you know, me being a male, you may not feel comfortable talking to me. I understand that. Is there someone you can talk to now? Is there a form tutor you would like to talk to about? And she said, yes. Thinking about how a fridge works, what type of sensor does it contain? Now, a fridge contains a lot of sensors. Something else I noticed in your lesson, which I thought was lovely, was the way you use your voice. Is that conscious? Is I, it a um, natural skill? I definitely have to talk a lot slower, because naturally, I do talk fast. So when I'm doing my lesson, I do talk slower. Yeah. When I have to address behavior, I get a little bit more stern, but I don't make a habit of it, and I don't stay stern as in to kind of show, you know, I've lost my yeah. temper. Yeah. I will get stern, and then I'll go back to being slow. Right, your homework. It's as follows. One of the it's best true. things I've had to me so far is some of the naughty pupils. Like when I met them, first two, three lessons, they're naughty. And now, and now they're turning around. And that shows that this kid is actually understanding what I'm trying to do with him. Yeah. Right, everyone else, thank you very much. See you next week. We kind of nurture them here. Um, to ensure that they have a successful NQT year. We don't want them leaving their profession or leaving us after we've trained them so well. When you're in NQT, there will be some classes who cause you a lot of problems. You've got to keep trying the strategies. You've got to put strategies in place, and if those ones don't work, then you try some other ones. What you don't do is lower your standards, lower your expectations, and let students get away with misbehaviour.